रोशनी जो है बढ़ी सोचो में दुनिया बदल दे कहीं बातों में रहती भी है यादों की जल्दी उलझन कहीं जीवन जन्म What a band! Yeah, I messed up on one of the chords. <laughs> By the way, that amazing guitaring you were listening to was Mr. Omer Kazi. Mr. Omer Kazi. Wah 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 wah. We're gonna talk about Generation Two. Gen Two. Yeah. Any favorites, guys? Pepsi Battle of the Bands fame. Shout out to Pepsi Battle. Pepsi Battle of the Bands. Man, they've done a tremendous amount of work on getting bands. I mean, to battle. <laughs> yeah, give me the best <laughs> battle. <laughs> um, I think Otto for me was going to be the, uh, the Torchbearers. Especially with um, the, the original lineup. Who was Otto? Otto was Farouk. In Tutel. Nabil. Kamran. Well, so I mean, right. How, how, how did they start? And Jason. Uh, I think it was 2000, right? Uh, you know, well, Nabil, Nabil and Kamran, they used to yeah. play for Jinej Egyptian. Okay, yeah? They mm -hmm. were his uh, backup, uh, you know, they did a lot of work in Usrapa. Session, 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 yeah. session players, right? Okay. And then... So in your eyes, that's why they have credibility, because they played with Janine. Basically, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right, Nabil's a very talented guitarist. Uh, I don't know where he is now. I don't know where he is now, but Nabil's a very, very talented guitarist. And I think he did, uh, on Janine Jamshade's solo album, I think he had a lot of guitaring. Was he the one that did the Unplugged, uh, Ed Bar and uh, the other Unplugged song? That no, was, no, no, no. That was, was Vital Signs. Yeah, but was who, who played... Uh, oh, Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was Amir Zaki. Correct, yeah. correct. Nabil played uh, Tum Ke Ho. Remember that song? Yeah. Tum Ke Ho. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. That was the most beautiful song out of that era. Yep. So these guys all then, what, came together late Well, Nabil and Kamran. Because they really hit it off uh, yeah. in 2000, right? Pepsi Battle of the Bands. They did. I think they, they formed in Farouk. Yeah. They formed in 1998 in, in Karachi. 98? But yeah. wasn't the first season of Battle of the Bands in 2000? It was no, early, early 2000. 2002. But of course, I mean, that band can't just come together. They have to jam together. They have to create right. songs. It takes a while. And it takes all, a while. So, but Otto, I mean, the, the thing with Otto was after Battle of the Bands, <clears throat> where the song that they won with, the cover of the Vital Science song. Ajnabi. Right? Ajnabi. Mm -hmm. That was the freshest. Like, everybody did covers, but it was basically the same song. Yeah. Just sung over with, you know, same instrument, take, same everything, yes. just a new recording of the same thing. But I will say, didn't they actually lip sync? Well, that was the show. show. The the show is different. The show they had to lip sync because this, that was the technology. That, Back then that, they were lip syncing. Yeah. By the way, the, they the don't song say was that. Original. If you if you hear them right now talk about the first season, they'll say they were playing live. Maybe it's the video recordings that we saw from mm -hmm. here. Could have been done I mean, for TV. Maybe they were just that good. No, no, no. It was a studio <laughs> recording. <laughs> studio you, you can tell a studio versus. Because yeah. a lot of times, like TV dubbings would have like studio recordings dubbed on there. Yeah. Uh, and so I mean, but but, the... but I, I'm actually really curious to hear your thoughts and Omer, Omer Kazi, for our listeners, uh, your thoughts about the transition that happened, right? Because you had who were the judges on that show? Rohan Hayat. Yeah, the OG had, man, Rohan Shazad. Shaz, yes, you had yes. um, what's his nickname? Shazi or whatever they Shai. call him. Shai. Shai is my bad. Oops. You know no disrespect. <clears throat> I know, my bad. I'm I'm of a younger generation. So, I mean, but, like, there was a clear uh, sort of shift, right, that you saw the music going into. And then uh, who, were, the who, were, who were the finalists that were challenging them? Yeah, they DP. Entity Paradigm. Uh, Mikhail so, Hassan Band. Mikhail Hassan Band. Band. These yeah, are the top Band three. Mikhail Hassan, Band. Entity Paradigm. And, and by, by the way, it was two bands. Ms. Entity and there. Paradigm. And then they yeah. combined it together yeah. and made Entity Paradigm. And I think but that's I didn't know that, by the way. Let's hear that. How I don't do you know. know I, I don't remember. Where did I learn about this? this because of... There's two websites, KarachiUnderground.com right. and Pak yeah. Media Revolution. Pak Media Revolution, right. Yeah, PakistanUnderground.com. Yeah. Yeah. There's also another yeah. Nuri dedicated one. Nuri. Nuri, we, we learned everything about Nuri yeah. from those websites. Yeah. yeah. 
we were these websites were like push, pushing out all this yeah. information, all these new things that were coming up. But that's but that's that just shows you the diversity, right? Just the top three and how different. I mean, the genres were all different. So there's the, here's the, here's the difference. So here's the difference. There was several bands that never made it beyond their you know one or two hit wonders. Like there was Positive, there was Visal. They had some really good songs. Yeah, Visal. and these these guys were just college students. They met a song Roxen. or two. Roxen. Yeah, Ro Rosen, Roxen, Roxen, whatever. Yeah. So actually, Rosen actually made it out. They're, the guy plays on Coke Studio now. Get oh, he does. He's from Rosen, is he? Well, but the, but as a, as an entity, as a band itself, they didn't, right? I mean, even same thing with Kavish. So anyway, Kavish so didn't get. That yeah, Kavish. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of Kavish, yeah. not not Rosen. Oh, Jaffer like, said. Yeah, Kavish, Kavish made it up. Yeah. Kavish hey, came me and Jamal were talking about him the other day. Like yeah. he doesn't get the notoriety, even though he's phenomenal, yeah. so especially with what he's done with Coke Studio. Right. Coke so Studio my, fell that, off the moment he left. The the point mm -hmm. I'm trying to make is that you had the Park Media Revolution and those underground websites where they showcase the unsigned bands, right? Pepsi, the, you became signed. As soon as you won Pepsi, you became signed. Or if mm -hmm. you were the top contenders, you became a signed band. Like uh, EP became signed. They got an album deal. They were you know, marketed. They were doing concerts. But Visal, Positive, and other bands like that, these guys were just, you know, they, they were one or two songs and they played college shows. And that was it. Yeah. They didn't get an album out. They didn't have enough songs for an album, you know, probably. Yeah. So, But the one or two songs they had were, were excellent. But now that kind of got lost along the way. But now with, you know, going back to we started talking well, about Pepsi. Let, let, let's talk about their music real quick because as I was thinking about this particular song that we just did, did. Um, their music just had a first of all, it had an earthy quality to it. It was um, it was earthy, but it was had the if you listen to the uh, lyrical content and the melodies yeah. that we're doing was a lot more Alamgir Vital Science. Yeah. As opposed to the what the new guys were bringing, like it what threw Rudy it back was bringing, to a different, was bringing. different kind of style and different generation. Yeah. It was right? still a yeah. fresher take on it because mm -hmm. it was infusing a lot more metal sounds too yeah. that you didn't exactly. necessarily see. That's, what was, what that's why the, I, I consider them the torchbearers because I think for me personally. Like, I'm a total vital science Jurun kind of guy, right? Yeah. And I actually stopped, or I, I dropped uh, out of the whole new generation scene. Yeah. Like, I don't know their history as much as I know the first generation, right? Yeah. And it was because Otto breaking up. For yeah. me, it was going to be Otto. That was going to be my band, my third, you know, like after Jurun. Yeah, that's the thing with Otto. The, the sound that they brought was different because we always had the pop sound with Vital Signs and then Junoon was doing their own thing, obviously. It was not as poppy as Vital Signs and those that followed Vital Signs. But Otto brought this kind of uh, post-pop, <coughs> post-rock sound. You know, with the uh, Apregios and the with the yeah. keyboard with Gummy and all, that that keyboard sound was missing. It was always poppy, but now they brought yeah. this rock and they mixed this together. Well, so it was like a post grunge sound that a lot of you know even Western bands were going for. Radiohead, Muse, and all yeah. those big bands. They're yeah. they're going for yeah. for that same. And at the same time, I mean, Farouk, synth pop, Farouk Ahmed's voice was very soulful, right? So I mean, Farouk is like very Sawal, so, I mean, right now, Abi made the man Sawal. Yeah. Right? yeah so here's like, here's another he's thing, thing about Farouk, and it's just like the way the the weight of the song and the lyrics. Let me ask you guys something. One by one, <laughs> Farouk or Atif Aslam? Pick one. Oh, Farouk. Oh, come on. Much superior singer. <laughs> Damn, that's not even a question, huh? So good. same thing with wow. Farouk. I you mean, too. But not Atif. that our crowd is biased. I mean, long term now, I would say Atif. Really? Uh, Atif has had commercial success. Yeah. But to so say his that his voice has matured significantly. Absolutely. Now. So here's the I thing. Think At that Farouk point, Farouk has the most meaty, melodious voice. In, out of the whole. You know, the reality is, I haven't really seen much else from Farouk, and, and other than what whatever we saw, like. Today. I mean, you look back at a song like Nakaho and just like, I mean, he basically carried the entire song. Like right. the rest right. of the instruments are sort of like just in really in the background, right? I mean, there's not much going on. So what was happening else. with this new generation of bands? The the thing that people don't really realize or talk about much was the infusion of classically trained singers into the pop scene. Right. You have Fusion, right? You had Farouk, he's classically trained, uh, seemingly at least, or from what I've heard he is. He was in Mikhail Hassan band, band, very classic, yes. you know. Yeah, Javed Bashir. Javed, Javed Bashir, Bashir. Yeah. he's a Kawal. Javed Bashir, Javed Bashir. Javed Bashir. Javed Bashir. Javed Bashir. Right, so these guys, classically trained, pop, rock, synth sounds, and then this fusion was just, you know, happening. And then EP was along for the ride as well. They were bringing that rap, rock, mix, you know. Whatever Which is fresh. The Linkin Park type sound. Wait, you know what, though? I think it was really needed for that time, though. I think, I think it was you know what? It's, it's amazing that, you know, when, when you go back to Junoon, yeah. the first couple of Junoon albums was a lot more ACDC than Halen, right? And then they got into Led Zeppelin when they started fusing with, in fact, right? Now, with, um, now these guys were behind, and then Nuri, when Nuri was coming up, me and Omer, we used to, we heard about this this guy who was singing like in his deep Seattle grunge voice, mm -hmm. and we were excited. And we heard like Sari Rat Jagar, and it was it was banging, right? So we were like, oh, he's gonna be the new. But then they they took a a sharp right turn into Blink One Eighty Two and Weezer, right? Mm -hmm. So in that same uh, way, EP was very Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park, right? Which was very like concurrent too, because that's that what was hot time, in America. That's, yeah, that's it's what's what's fulfilling the idea. service that you needed overall. So to digress, Nuri, you know, we first heard about. Um, Ali Hamza, 
not Ali Noor, Ali Hamza, you know, he's got the deeper voice. And uh, he used to play at Lums, and his recordings were showing right. on the under. And you know, I'm not going to mention some of the songs, but one of the other ones that was popular was the Gawal Mandi Ke Siri Bhai. Yeah. Right? That was a pop. He had three actually, and the other two, you know, you guys can look up yourselves if you, if you ever find it. Yeah. Uh, but it's the really, really fun songs, and uh, you know, college guys just sitting around. Yeah, very expletive, and uh, it, was, it was fun. So yeah, they, yeah. And then and they formed him and his you know, cousin, brother, whatever, Ali Noor, they, they formed the band and then it took off from there. They had other songs like Ben. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, that's what I didn't want to mention. But yeah, they had these songs. And there was another, a third one too. <laughs> well, that's actually, that, that, that was a really song. Actually, yeah, that, was that, a really, that, that song had a good message, actually. That, that was, uh, you know, yeah. even the dogs are better than you, you unfaithful, lying, yeah. cheating. Then that was a more mature spin yeah. on lyrics than they had in the first album. So the way the Nuri, uh, Nuri and EP were set apart from the rest of these uh, Romikal Hassan and uh, the other upcoming bands was the youth uh, sound of it, right? The the lyric lyrically they were very youthful. That the youth angst was part of this, right? You know why does the, why is the world right? I mean Nuri was the positive youth, yeah. youthfulness and EP was the angsty youthfulness. Right, yeah, yeah. The, the earth is being yeah. destroyed and yeah. everything sucks so and you know. Yeah. It goes back to what me and Ahmad was talking about between the fights between Mizabians and Nuri fans. Yeah. Mm. So actually, Nuri filled a nice vacuum with uh, being Teeny Bopper Rock. Yep. That it was kind of needed, you know? I'm not call it Teeny Bopper. No? Well, you were Teeny Bopper back then, that's why. It's, <laughs> it's okay to grow up with, like, I think, even back then, like, when I was growing up with Vital Signs, they were considered Teeny Bopper. You go back to the Beatles. Beatles are considered like Teeny Bopper. Sidon Kimmy Javan is like one of the greatest albums ever. I mean, so Nuri, Nuri, there's like four words that are in every single song of their album, right? Tan, man, tol, bol, bol. Like, like, so they, they just took those words and tried to insert it in every... every, every uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yara, um, Clearly, yeah. you can tell there are some Mizrabians here and some <laughs> no, Nuri, no, no, Nuri faithful here. We're, we're very uh, Nuri, and I mean Nuri's latest album, Kanam, uh, Begum Gul Farosh, or Kya Bulama Sanam, right? Yeah. So their their second album, Pili Pati, Dunia Wali. Yeah. That yeah. album was kind of that was garbage. To be honest. Well, but was, the Kutte yeah. song was from there, right? That, that Except a, I think Ucha, Ucha, Ucha was Ucha released. Was, but Ucha was a pre-release song well before. Yeah, it was a pre-release song. Ucha was, was released, released as a single on one of the Ucha was an underground song and they just happened to release it on Pili Begum Bakaudi Sarfarosh. Begum Gul. Gul. Yeah, but that's an excellent album. I mean, you can tell the maturity of the sound that that the band has come from. They only have like seven tracks. Yeah, but though every single track is, you know, just stands on its own. I love that album. Especially the Kutte. And this is the one that came on Right? Yes. 2015. Yeah. Has it been that long? Has it been that long? Wow. Sheesh. It feels like it, it came out last year. Uh, August or September of 2015. Wow. wow. Yeah. But anyway, for Ottawa, basically, it started in 98. You have this ragtag group of guys who are just excellent musicians to win Pepsi Battle of the Bands. Next thing you know, they have an album, which was called... Sawad. Sawad. Yeah. Yes. That was the title song and the album. And song. there was a big fat Man, Pepsi logo at the bottom. What was the makeup of that <laughs> album? Eighty like, percent like... of those songs were released as singles, leading up to the album. I think in the album there's only probably like four new songs. Everything else was released with videos, most of them. Yeah. And every single one was a banger, dude. Yeah. They were. Uh, yeah. Sawal. Uh, Nakaho. What was that slow one with the burning? Uh, Jalan. Pirvo Ag. Ag. Uh, Ag. Uh. And jata, there, there were, there were, there were, there were, yeah, there was another one called, um, there, there was another one called, uh, Jalan, right? Ning, it was not popular, didn't have a video, but the way it started, Dilki Bhatnam Oh, that one, uh, but that, I don't think that came out as a signal, I think that came out as a signal. Ignam Sikhana Padge Aata, it's just, I mean, these guys and are then, having fun, then, right? And like the, like the last episode, they did have a little Mili Nagba, didn't they? Yeah, Jian. Jian, Jian. Man, we tried to cover that and song. that was a good song but, uh, too. Yeah. Like when we were, uh, when, when we started, me and Omar and uh, you, you two, I think, come on, when we started playing together, yeah. um, we we started with Nuri songs. I mean, we started with like Junior Vaisal, but we immediately got into Nuri and Aru because that was like mm. concurrent at that time, right? right? Yeah. So we tried doing um, we did GA. We did GA. Yeah. GA was very difficult, man. But you know, so Aru didn't last too long, right? It did. One album. Very nasty. One album, that's it. Very nasty. falling out. Uh, then, yeah. then there's that sort of infamous story that everybody knows about where Farooq Ahmad then came to the United States. He moved to like, what, New York or New something? New York, yeah, he's got a story. Started up his own like 99 cents. I think store. he's still like going back and forth to Pakistan and uh, New York. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, essentially, it's sort of a tragic story of the Pakistani sort of like music industry or just the economy. I mean, so like, we haven't talked about Jal yet. Same thing happened to Jal, right? right. At the first time we mentioned a little bit, but he started with Jal. That was his band. 
and then they had the first album, extremely popular. Uh, Ada became one of the most played, most make popular didn't songs. Didn't make any money off of it. And Ada came out on one of those websites. Yeah, and Ada, yeah that's where it became viral. Leaked, and then yeah. all of a sudden, the band falls apart. And you know, Jello went out to have some success, not at the same level as Ada. First of all, obviously, he went international to the neighbors, and you know, had a lot of success there. Right. Um, but Jello, the band, they did their You're thing. Ada had another band uh, album though. They had Ragnila. They did, yeah. Ada had Ragnila. But once again, it's like Nuri's second album. It, it just, uh, you know, that was their new album. It's a flyby album. Album, you just uh, they got one sure but, no, now, but it was it, again like I I like that album I don't know I know you guys most of you guys don't like it yeah I didn't like it but I like it because of like it was more organic and it was uh, Farouk's singing and songwriting that, that's what made that album the guitaring and everything was okay it was uh, not as not up to par as Nadine, Nabil, mm -hmm. uh, Nabil's level mm -hmm. obviously but the Farouk songwriting and his singing was there and it was it was nice it was beautiful Right. I don't just had a song recently in the last few years. Um, what's it called? Men uh, Manta. Man it's, uh, it's a Habib Jalib. Uh, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a poem, a famous poem, and they, and they sang, sang it. And yeah, Men Manta. That's what it's but called. You know, 2017, going, two years ago. So, go, yeah. so going back to this like early 2000s explosion, I mean, Otto came onto the scene, EP came onto the scene. I think um, sometime in the mid 2000s, the Goddess and Band released their album, mm -hmm. Sampura, right? Yeah. Um, beautiful album. Um, and so then, my, I guess my question also is, who was behind them? Um, but 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 also like. What you mean other than Pepsi? Well, I mean, who was sort of like who was working with them um, on these projects? Then you had like folks like Call come along, right? See, um, like Mikal Hassan, he was kind of a self-made person because he, he had, yeah. you know, like at that time he had the studio <laughs> that everybody was going to. Right. But Waz was uh, recorded with Mikal Hassan. Where were we? Louis' first album recorded? was recorded with the. Uh, Mikalsen? Where are these studios? Lahore? Where are they? I think Mikal's studio was in Lahore, but I think he packed up and went to India. Oh, he did? Oh, I no. think he moved to India. Uh, and then... You gotta do... So now everybody goes to uh, Shahi Yassin's studio since then. All right. Yeah. And Shahi Well, so that's what I mean, is that the technical aspect, that's what I'm also really interested in. Because from what I've heard, like, um, Shazad Hassan, Rohit Hayat, like, all these dudes were so instrumental, right? I mean, and, mm. and, and they could have easily just, like, taken a step back and said no. Screw you all. We don't care. Yeah. We've done our part. Or, or, or you know, jealousy was jati jobi but uh, but, but no, you know, this, right? this first I mean, generation hasn't been like that. If you look at, uh, I was listening to um, an uh, online interview of Ms. Bakhan. He's from uh, Sequencers, hmm. and he was talking about Junaid Jamshed and Salman Ahmed, how they used to support them with equipment and all these other things and studio time and things right. like that. Yeah. So I think Junaid Jamshed had that reputation. Salman Ahmed definitely had it. Yeah. Ali Azmat, he's been very supportive of all you guys. Especially, you know, he's close to like, you know, Jaswal brothers and, and Ali Noor and these guys. So he's always been supportive of them. So uh, Ali Azmat actually sang a few lines on uh, Uncha, right? At the end, that's Ali he Azmat. He did, yeah. So a lot of people don't realize he, he supported that's the, right, yeah, the yeah, artist. Yeah. 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 So um, now that we're talking about, and I don't want to fast forward, but I don't care. Uh, I want to, the, the legend that is now Zulfi. Mm. And I know, I like, you guys that. are more hardcore fans of Zulfi, and you know where he comes from. He comes from EP, just as a guitarist. Mm -hmm. And now <laughs> he's at a at a point where he's just a genius. I like to call Zulfi the kingmaker, right? So Zulfi did EP, then he went on to Call. Call, yep. absolutely legendary first album, man. Rocked it. I mean, they just killed their Their singer was yeah. the Kanan Toska, <clears throat> Junaid, I think. Which is a separate question of, like, which band has the best debut album? Yeah, I don't and know, And Jilawatan would definitely be in that. Jilawatan is up top, man. I, right. I, I listened to that album for months and months straight, nonstop. But Junaid, that voice, that raw voice, that yeah. rock voice he brought, nobody else in Pakistan was, was doing yeah. that. I don't know, I hope his throat is okay. But yeah. actually, they say... <laughs> They sang two seasons ago on Pepsi. They they uh, sang yeah, Jilla with yeah, them, he right? Fine, he yeah. sang the next level. And, 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 next level. and then Zulfi, you can tell the way he's matured as a producer and a musician. The production he put on for that Jalawatan performance for Pepsi, that is just not. I have not seen that in Pakistan anywhere. Nuts. I yeah. mean, that is just. It was wild. It's man. that, and then they did the Pakistan uh, Zindabad. Yeah, the drum, the drum uh, like thing. Twenty here. drum kits. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 So what hasn't he done? So Zulfi now he's he, you know he's doing the right thing. I think every musician at the, at his level should be try or at least try. I'm sure they are try to be involved in in bringing up the so Nescafe basement. That's Zulfi's pet project now, mm -hmm. right? Nescafe has brought up like. So it seems like he's following that Rohail Hayat pattern, right? Exactly. Creating programs, yeah. creating opportunities, right? Exactly. More but so it's only the... natural that he's going to take it to another level. You know, level. actually, no, I'm going to be a little bit, so I'm going to so. draw, yeah, I'm going to yeah. draw a critical distinction. I actually yeah. don't think he's doing the same thing as Rohit Hayat did. With all due respect to Rohit Hayat, I think Rohit Hayat was definitely more interested in kind of these like experimentation and fusion of like blending different kind of like styles of music. 
and taking established artists and sort of like making that happen, right? Whereas someone like Zulfi, I mean, he's bringing in like, he literally collects our entire room of like 18, like young, <laughs> talented Well, he brought a six year old in the least. Yeah, the, he'll bring in like songs. six vocalists and be like, okay, do your thing, right? I mean, and harmonize or whatever you want to do. So the, the point I want to make is does. that it's only natural that he's, he's got a one up real hand because things have to evolve, right? Right. So if you look at generation two bands, they have evolution. They have uh, taken things to a next level compared to Vital Science and Juno, right? Even though I, I'm, I'm sure Juno and Vital Science can hold a candle to them, and, and you know, Strings are still doing things, right? But, well, and uh, you know, other than the fact that all those bands kind of fell apart. But things do evolve, so I think it's only natural that Zulfi is going to take it a level or two higher than Royal Hat in all of these productions. I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I think genre-wise, it feels like Zulfi still has more of a rock-centered approach to how he, he writes these arrangements. For Rahil, it's always been very more Sufi-centric and more traditional. Um, so there's that distinction for sure. Both of them are parallel in that they, they've created this platform to actually empower artists and have some type of proper studio setting where you can record higher like and, and better quality arrangements for songs that you don't necessarily have. Um, but they are distinct in different ways. So here, here's another thing though, you know, er, er, all of these artists, I think they, I, I do believe that those that have res, uh, achieved some sort of success try to give back as best as possible. So Faraz Anwar, for example, you know, he's legendary guitarist of Pakistan. Some people call him one of the top, you know, top five, top three even uh, guitarists. Um, and uh, wh wh whatever his capacity is, uh, he does lessons, right? Yeah. That's his way of giving back. He, and honestly, if I was in Pakistan and a legend like Faraz Anwar is offering, you know, four lessons a, a month, I would, I would be all over it, you know? If well, and here's some interesting things that <coughs> you can draw from that. And he's not the only one. Amir Zaki's done a school, Ali Azmar does school. Yeah. Do you think, and this will be a fun thing to find out, you're seeing all these amazing guitar players coming out of Pepsi shows and uh, Nescafe. Do you think they're all taught by these, uh, these legends, Amir Zaki, Faraz Anwar schools and Ali Azmar schools? Or Could be. Do you think they're all self-taught? No, I don't think all of them can be taught. I mean, I think, I think there is a culture in Pakistan amongst a certain subset of like, again, urban sort of like the Harites and Karachiites and you know folks in Islamabad who <clears throat> are into this scene right and then they and they will go out and seek out whatever they need to do and a lot of them are just naturally talented and they'll just be, yeah I mean you didn't learn really from anyone right I mean so um just pick up the guitar and, and that's what you do um but but I think I think so I, I will say um it's great that they're giving back uh but you know Zawad and I we've been to Pakistan before I don't know about Zawad's exposure the other two sitting here have, have not been to Pakistan, just for the record, uh, ever. Um, just want to bring that keep up. Keep rubbing that in our face, man. But, uh, <laughs> but so I, you so said that in every episode, man. So I was just there, I, I was, yeah, I do, I was just there last year. And, you know, I, I went to, so I, I caught word that Kashmir, uh, mm. which won the first Pepsi Battle of the Bands, you know, the sort of the new iteration, was playing um, at the Karachi Arts Council. And so I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, like, Dikit Kazim and Inge, Dikit Nim and Dubai Inge, blah, blah, Dijali Jana Parega. I get there and literally no one is there to see Kashmir. I mean, pretty much all of the students that are there are like these government school kids who are having like their own sort of like musical competition for like the region and which, which was in itself great, but um, there was no band scene. There was just like a bunch of like kids going up and like singing on their own. And, and half the kids, I think honestly did not even know who Kashmir was, right? So again, this goes back to the thing that I keep mentioning of like, this is really kind of limited to a certain subset of like Pakistanis in Pakistan. And so I guess the question, it's a rhetorical question really of like, how does it get to be such a sort of um, thing where it's actually spread apart? It has to be corporate money because you don't have enough of an audience to yeah. sell tickets to. Maybe. So. I, I think it's more than money. I mean, the, the, what, what are they competing against? They're competing against filmy music. That's right. the biggest one, right? So people, or even just general pop music. Yeah, so people yeah. are drawn more to that for some reason. Or, you know, maybe that's just on people's minds mostly. And then here comes rock music, which is you know it's it's hard to digest at first, but once you get going, it, you know yeah. you're, you're a full. Well, it also comes with like a little bit of a cultural <laughs> stigma, right? It's because some music's in real time. Right. Oh, rock, rock industry has like an overlap with the general pop industry. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just now, uh, Ali Zafar did a show in Dallas, and Asad Ahmed was playing guitars for him. Yeah, right. And that's still happening. Like uh, the, the amazing guitarists are still playing sessions for pop artists. And you gotta get paid, man. <laughs> yeah. So there's an overlap. That so I guess I, so. My question is: Given that Otto <clears throat> and EP and Pepsi Battle of the Bands in 2002 sparked this sort of like revolution, or maybe it was just a part of it, right? But it definitely sparked and, and sort of like created some sort of impetus. 
then do we expect that the modern day iteration of Pepsi Battle of the Bands is going to do the same thing? Because it's been around since 2017 now, it's in its third season. Uh, we've had some really talented sort of like bands that have come onto the scene. I am um, loving them. Special mention to Roots, for instance. I don't know if anybody's going to agree with me, but I actually thought they were pretty names? decent. I don't think from so. the first season. Right now, it's not gonna stop. <laughs> no, no. I mean, um, but so one band that I have. Another involved... band that came out with like the the controllers, the X and Y yeah. controllers uh, from last oh, season. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. They're actually pretty good. So they got rejected right away. Anyway. So another band. I mean, but now, but now, you yes. know, they were front oh, runners. They were second place. So the the first iteration or second season of Pepsi or the Battle of the Bands that just you know came out a few years ago. You had Badnam and Kashmir were the two top names that came out, and they've been doing well enough. I know I, I've are. been following Badnam on social media, and they're making music videos, they're making new songs. They Kashmir are. is also. Mm -hmm. Then we had Bayan and mm -hmm. um, Zerb from la yeah. last season. And Bayan, I, I feel like they just got a free ticket to the top because uh, the singer was known already. Uh, you know, from Nescafe, he'd been on several seasons, and yeah. I, I think they just wanted they wanted him to uh, to succeed to to be signed. And and he got that. And Zerb, I thought, was a you know much more better band technically, lyrically, all of that. Yeah. But in any case, uh, you we know, gotta do a, a special on on season two along, and this yeah. this third generation that's coming up. <clears throat> well, so I mean, but you yeah. actually do. So you're saying you have hope that this will. I I think so. But then, like like you said, you know, it's it's what can the population digest? They can only take so much. Yeah. yeah. You're competing against these big filmy songs and. And I do think the youth in Pakistan are sort of like becoming more and more exposed to these things because you know the spread of the internet has sort of like exposed them to these yeah, things. Yeah, right? well, even so from generation there two is going to be a marketplace at some point. From gen two to gen three, the internet's entirely different now. That's right, yeah. So, it's changed so let's get into that. Because in uh, you're seeing more filmy music being made for like the Pakistani cinema with like official soundtracks and stuff. But then on top of that, there's more of an e a developing EDM environment in yes. Pakistan too. So mm -hmm. it's like there's a... There's a hip hop too, hip hop too. Yeah, and hip hop so, uh, too. So. I'll, I'll, I'll leave this last thought that even here in the West, in America, the rock music is not as popular as R&B and hip hop and all those yeah. other artists, you know, and the pop like Ariana Grande and stuff like that. And then you have these rock bands. Used to be much more. They're, they're, yeah, rock bands have, rock has just taken a, a backseat to, to all these other pop type, uh, type scene. And that's happening all over the world. So it's not unique to Pakistan. All right, so we're going to wind it up here. Um, my name is Ali Kazi. I got my brother Omer Kazi here. And the phenom Zawar Jafri. And our uh, host, our regular host, Hamad Alam. And um, till the next episode, guys. Stay tuned. Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz.